Hi, hi everyone. Well, we have a little noise here. So uh, good afternoon. I hope uh, you're not too tired after the lunch. Uh, my name is Eshed Galore. I work for Huawei in, out of the Tel Aviv Research Center. And I'm here to talk about the one traffic control as a service for Neutron today. So a little bit of the problem description. I know that uh, this subject is a little misunderstood, and there are a lot of uh, ideas about what it actually means. So what we see today is uh, more and more hybrid clouds, where hybrid cloud is, is basically every cloud where you have uh, also uh, external services. Even if, you're, if your organization is using Gmail or some other kind of uh, software service, then it's already considered a hybrid cloud. And what we see is there is an increase in east-west uh, communication across the one links, which results usually in uh, um, more cost. Um, together with uh, basically the lack of uh, tenant level traffic shaping, so what we see today that is you usually have traffic shaping uh, like uh, on the one link itself aggregated to all of the tenants, regardless of the tenants. There is no transparency for the virtual networks of each tenant inside this one link. So that means uh, the chatty or greedy applications, they will starve the rest of your application on the one link. And it's impossible to, to prioritize between the, the various applications and the various virtual networks. That means that basically tenant level SLA is not possible. So what is and what isn't supported in Neutron? So what we have today in Neutron is we have a port-based quality of service. So that's basically mean we can do rate limitation for a single VM port, but not all of the VM port if it has multiple ports. And what is not supported is, is network level quality of service, as I mentioned. So if you want to do a rate limitation on the virtual network, uh, for example, all the virtual machines that belong to a specific virtual network, let's say VNet1, limit them to five megabit total. So that's not possible. And also, tenant or project level quality of service or rate limitation, not possible. So if you want to limit all the networks that belong to a specific project, together to, to be, let's say, one megabit. That's also not an option today. So if you look at it in this graphic, so you can see on the, up, on the upper side, this is the tenants. So the tenants can see, the projects can see the virtual networks they, they create. And they can also see the edge, the, the external router that is provided to them by the admin. The admin on the other side, can define the, the router. They see the one link or the, 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 the connection to the one, but they do not see the virtual networks. They don't have ability to see or to define any policies on the virtual network level. So um, why do I need traffic control and neutron, right? OK, so the purpose is we actually look at two kinds of uh, users for that. So hybrid cloud users. For the hybrid cloud users, um, and I, will, I chose the hybrid cloud as an example here. Of course, it meets other use cases. Um, the ability to limit and enforce fairness on services that go out to the WAN link. Uh, so for example, if um, you decide to have uh, pro to prioritize your disaster recovery plan replication and on, you know, uh, over other less important services, uh, for example, FTP, which is a greedy protocol, then that, that will make it possible. Um, another user will be the private cloud provider, OK? So or enterprise private cloud uh, provider. This is the admin that actually provides cloud services for internal projects or customers and want to enforce an SLA. So, for example, limit a tenant, a complete tenant, 
or a department, if, it's that, if that's uh, the IT manager, uh, to a certain rate limit on the one bound traffic. So just to see a few use cases, we can see the just uh, traffic that goes to the web, that kind of uh, one uh, consuming uh, traffic. There is uh, traffic between um, sites in a hybrid cloud, between the VPCs. Uh, that could be uh, traffic between a branch and a main office, or that could be just uh, traffic between a main office and some remote storage, like say S3 and Amazon, or something like that. And all these points are basically the entry and exit points of the one links. This is, this is where you would potentially want to enforce a uh, quality of service and traffic control. So what's the implications for, implications for the user? So if there is no traffic control on the one gateway, there is no control on the utilization of the one bandwidth, and then everyone crashes into each other, then no one gets really the uh, optimal uh, service level. So oh, I decided to go with the use case of a hybrid cloud. I think it's the, the one that is um, simplest to, to, uh, to understand. So on the left side, just an enterprise data center, some private cloud, OpenStack, of course, two projects. There's a one link connecting that to a public cloud, an extension in a public cloud. And um, this, is, this is what we want to, this is the shared resource that we want to, uh, to, to create our traffic control. Now, what are the requirements? So we want to be able to have a project level limit Project means tenant, uh, it's a keystone project. So different projects have different limitations. Now, uh, we want to be able to have a directional limitation. So traffic from some specific uh, network to, or going out to a specific destination within the project may have a different limit. We also want to have group limitations, meaning uh, group together, uh, make a logical group of VMs, um, and let's, for example, say a department and to configure it with a different, <coughs> different limitations, sorry. And also hierarchy of limits so that uh, you can limit a project to a specific uh, bandwidth and you can limit the, uh, some group of virtual machines inside this project with a different uh, limit, of course, a lesser amount of uh, bandwidth. So there are various connectivity options when you see, when you look today at, uh, at all the setups that uh, enterprises and uh, private clouds have. So there are many options. You have uh, layer two connectivity using uh, the layer two gateway or border gateway. Uh, you have um, just VPN, layer three connectivity. You have MPLS VPN, which does both L2 and L3, or you just have uh, uh, internet bound traffic going to the web. So now I'll explain about our implementation for a traffic control device and service in Neutron. So the traffic control device, it, we didn't build a device, it's just software, of course, this reference implementation, but what is it? Where do we put it? So this uh, simplified figure we see here some private cloud with three virtual networks. Let's assume even different projects, although that doesn't really matter. And, and all these virtual networks eventually go through a one gateway, one router, sorry. Um, the TC is an inline device. It should be placed somewhere between the connectivity from the cloud and the one router. Okay, so let's look one scenario. We have single one link. That's, uh, let's say, a small branch connecting to a main office. So all the virtual networks will go to the same inline TC device, and potentially we will want to define here some limitations. Okay, so the colors match. So the top one belongs to virtual network number one. The limit virtual network one 
or VNI1, in this case, it's uh, the, the uh, virtual uh, networks are implemented using a VXLAN, uh, just conceptually. So VNI1 limit to one megabit. Uh, virtual network two limited the uh, virtual network two is limited to five megabits together with virtual network three, and then virtual network three is limited to two megabits. So that's like a hierarchy. Another scenario: you have multiple one links, and uh, you want to, you know, uh, load balance between those two. So, in this case. Um, Virtual network is switched towards the TC device number one, which goes between uh, uh, one of the one routers, and virtual network two and three go to the other. In this case, it's, uh, we've selected to, to put uh, to put them like this because if you have a shared, um, let's say, balance bandwidth uh, relationship between two networks, they need to go through the same TC device. We do not, in this implementation at least. Uh, know how to distribute the buckets. Another scenario would be load balancing. So in this case, you have a load balancer that you want to uh, ship the traffic between the one routers. So the inline TC device will be placed before the load balancer and enforce the limitation there. So a little bit about the uh, software components inside uh, this project. So what did we do? Um, so we created a new uh, API extension for, for Neutron. Um, it's currently in the process of being uh, pushed into Neutron. It's, uh, we are actually discussing this uh, in, in this summit. Um, and we've added our a reference implementation, which is using uh, the Linux TC uh, capability which I'll explain about in the next slide. So basically what you do is you have the API extension placed in the Neutron server, the plugin as well, and we've added uh, the APIs to uh, configure the TC. All the messages are sent on the message bus, received by the agent that is placed uh, in our implementation on the same uh, machine where the, the TC device is configured. And there's a driver there that actually configures the ETC device. That allows us to have a really open um, capabilities for every vendor to implement uh, this as they want, because the APIs are very flexible, so we don't care what is written inside. The device needs to understand what is sent to it. So they will go together, the plugin and the device will go together from the same vendor. But if you are a hardware vendor and you want to uh, set up or um, uh, create a, an adoption for your device into uh, the OpenStack, then basically that means you need to implement the plugin, and that's it. A little bit about the TC device inside, so how it works. So in our reference implementation, we're using uh, a bridge, in, in this case the OVS, but we are not really using the advanced OVS capabilities, just a bridge. Um, and we've placed the uh, queuing disciplines, or the, the, the queues that are actually implementing the, the, uh, the traffic control, on the uh, egress ports between the port in the bridge and the actual NIC port. So we are only handling the egress, we do not handle the ingress in our example here. Uh, the reason for that is that tra most traffic is actually TCP, although it may be encapsulated inside VXLAN, and it's enough that you limit one size and the other side will uh, very quickly uh, adjust uh, to uh, lower the uh, MTU. A little about the, the Linux traffic control. So uh, TC has... Uh, a uh, few terms that we should probably cover if you are not familiar with it. So TC is a user space utility um, for Linux, which is used to configure the Linux kernel packets scheduler. Um, you have um, a few terms here. You have uh, queue disks, you have classes. So queue disks, queue, queuing disciplines is um, 
where the kernel uh, needs to send a packet on, uh, on the interface. It will enqueue it to a queue disk, and the queue disk is configured for, for that specific interface. Um, classes are a term that uh, defines that some, some queue disks may, can, contain, can contain classes, and these classes can contain more queue disks. Uh, a queue disk may, for example, prioritize certain kinds of traffic by, uh, by trying to dequeue them from certain classes before others. You can find more information about the Linux DC uh, on the Linux DC website. A little about the TC filters. So a filter is used by a class for queue disk to determine in which class a packet will be enqueued. Whenever the traffic arrives at a class with the subclasses, it needs to be classified. All filters attached to that class are called until one of them returns with a, with a verdict. So quality of service in Linux. So usually what you do is you set a queue with a, with a, queue, with a queue disk, with a TC queue disk, sorry. Then you set a class with a, with a limitation. And then you select a filter, how to you know, decide on which, which of the traffic to, uh, to apply this class. So, as an example, <clears throat> we are creating a queue here um, on the device uh, ETHFS, uh, ETH0, sorry, mixing the languages, um, with, uh, you can see that on the left side. Then we set the limitation of one megabit. Um, by creating a class. And then we choose the traffic, which traffic to limit. In this use case, we've uh, actually, uh, using uh, the, the most powerful uh, matching uh, function, which lets us look at any offset on the packet and do a match. In this case, we are matching the uh, VNI field of the VXLAN headers. So uh, an example of the one traffic control device deployment. So usually what we will do is first we will allocate or create a device. Um, either it's deployed inside a virtual machine or a container or a bare metal with an image. And then we connect as a pass-through device. That's, that means we place it before the one gateway or before the load balancer in that use case. And then we configure it uh, through the APIs. Uh, we configure it uh, to connect to the message bus, and then it will register on the neutron. So I have some screenshots here for the, uh, just for the APIs we've, that we've implemented. So the first one is the 1TC device. That's the first you will use. So I will start with the create. The create is actually not necessary because it is done automatically when you connect the TC device. It will register itself on neutral. Uh, you have the option to list, show, and delete, of course, reg regular APIs. Yeah. You have the example now over there. We have the API for class. Again, it's a create, delete, show, list. And we have an API for the filter. Again, with the filter, you also specify the matching, which we saw on the previous uh, slide. Just as an example for a single command setup to make it simple. So just create in one command the uh, TC, you specify the network on which you want to apply this with the minimum and maximum bandwidth in this case, and that's it. Okay, so um, that's it about this presentation. Um, we are, as I said, uh, currently in the process of uh, um, pushing this to uh, the OpenStack Neutron. It's uh, under discussion, so it will be available in this GitHub um, soon, I hope. And uh, with that, if anyone has questions, so please reach a mic and go ahead. Uh, 
Okay. Thank you. Oh, you have a question. Sorry. Um, what kind of attributes, I came in a little late, maybe you covered this, but what okay. kind of attributes can you pass into OpenStack that you can normally give TC? Like, I, I noticed you were using a hierarchical token bucket filter, but what if you were, like, trying to pass it through another, like, queue or mm -hmm. something else, and I'm just not seeing how you might accomplish that. Okay. It's uh, a good question. Um, so, it depends on the implementation of the TC device itself. So, in our case, we, we've li used the Linux TC that has, you know, uh, certain known set of functionalities. Uh, we've kept the API clean so that you can write whatever you want as long as the device will detect it. We'll, we'll know how, what to do with it. So it's pretty flexible, okay? Whatever you put there, it will be sent on the message bus. It will reach the device. And then it's up to the device to, to know, to figure out what to do with it. Okay. Thank you, anyone, everyone?